Hey y'all, Clem Hawkins here, checking in with you, Residentially Challenged, going to share a few tips with you. Uh, when you're at war, the most important thing is to figure out who is the enemy. When you're trying to define an enemy, quit unplugging my phone Elvis, God bless it. When you're trying to define an enemy that's invisible, the easiest way to look at it is uh, who's making your life the most difficult. Now, the system that tries to control us, the reason I bring this up is my meal. I'm limited on funds. I live on $675 a month when otherwise unencumbered. This meal, this is uh, pro high protein bread with tuna. That amount of tuna I got a can of mayo or a jar of mayo with olive oil I got tuna and I got high protein bread because the one thing that they limit in the grocery stores as per money is protein it might be the thing that keeps us strong and gives us the ability to make decisions on a daily basis I might be lucky if I eat twice or three times as lucky twice as maybe standard Usually that twice is cutting one meal into two parts. For example, earlier today, I had one of these same sandwiches and a few chips and a couple emergencies for vitamin C. When the system works to make us all dumb and stupid to make worse decisions, as I'm going through this process of this DUI and all this shit that it's causing me to do, If I had not Googled this shit and found out about the DMV appeal or hearing, I would instantly have lost my license just because someone accused me of doing something I may or may not have been doing. Even if my blood alcohol content was 1.15, I was not impaired. I am That is typical for me. I've been drinking on two beers and a shot with food after a joint and a nap for the last month and a half or two. Not one incident, not one issue until I piss somebody off at the wrong bar. My bad. Anyway, after all the challenging stuff, I still have to make myself eat. I don't have much appetite. The fact that I exist on what is normally my daily intake is probably what most fat people's meal intake is or half that I don't count calories I don't have the attention to do that I eat protein whenever I can supposedly in two slices of bread there's 15 grams in a serving of tuna there's 8 or 10 grams so this might be 30 40 grams of a meal in protein I also have um, almond milk with a protein all of this stuff was on the clearance rack basically my non-protein stuff is um, my chocolate fix a bag of chocolate chips it's amazing how many candy bars one bag of chocolate chips can substitute and a bag of donut holes or a box of donut holes that was my impulse buy I don't like those I don't like much anything about them but their carbs, their calories. And the sugar probably helps me sleep. It's kind of a challenge. I went by the storage, tried to pay for storage, and the computer was down. Then Elvis fucked up. And I fucked up. So I had to leave. Because in the back there is a bunch of shit, which means I can't really stretch out to sleep. 
and even if the back was totally empty I could go diagonal but I still wouldn't be stretched out and I almost always sleep on my sides anyway so um, point of it is sleeping's not real easy I got a bag neck I have to sleep on the in the I get I get to sleep on the back of the Jeep as opposed to on a sidewalk or Uh, I still might have to, um, but my imagination was taking it to the point where I would have to pay a storage locker to store my Jeep or find a garage to rent to store the Jeep and then find some place to re renegade camp out, probably dealing with cops on a daily or weekly basis because I was living outside of the acceptable norm in a tent on public ground or some bullshit. That I will have to do for at least 12 weeks. A lot of these different message things have come kind of through accident, coincidence, chance. I didn't know about protein bread till I found it on the cheap rack. If I get two loaves and I try to pound through it, I think I got through the first two, but then the third one went moldy or something went moldy. Um, since as weather gets warmer and warmer, um, food store food spoilage happens quicker. Therefore, purchasing in bulk isn't really an option. I force myself, I'm forced by situation to purchase things based on their cheapest price per ounce or per gram or whatever the shit it is so if I want protein I look for tuna I look for the lowest price per ounce I mean, this stuff is 15 cents an ounce 17 cents you can't much beat it but it's vegetable oil tuna tuna supposedly has mercury in it I'm not sure that there's anything that I can eat that's healthy I'm pretty sure if the, the hard part is, is the people not paying attention, they will, you won't know you've lost until after you lost, see? And I'm seeing this losing situation, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm as prepared as possible for it. I've got 60 days. Hopefully I'll get this checked or three from the IRS for my taxes. I'll get the Jeep bug out ready. Cause I'm pretty sure I would choose to, if I could go up in the mountains and find a cool place like a Netherland or someplace to fucking kick it. Fuck having a driver's license. It's not worth all that headache. I've also thought about if it came to pass, where would I go to? Um, the courts don't require the DMV turnover, but the fact that a cop gave me a ticket that went to the courts means that the DMV got into my stuff. Um, I imagine the DMV is only going to have uh, DMV related incidences which is pretty much nothing so my priors will be nothing I have zero drug arrests and or convictions I do have $280 or something that I need to pay to Cape Girardeau for a weed ticket back in 2016. Um, and yeah, if that tells you anything, uh, that small sandwich and a hand, couple hand grabs of chips is about all my stomach can take.
I suppose I've thought of it regularly in a biblical sense that my trials and tribulations, my difficulties prepare me for things that will allow me to succeed. The fact that I've lived in such a socially remote, isolated sort of way for so many years, it's really, I don't have much hope for me when it comes to people. That being said, I gotta quit focusing on the people that are breathing and start thinking about the people that have yet to be conceived, maybe. Uh, if Kerouac on the road is any consolation, even at the doubling, or quadrupling even, I'm looking at seven to 15 years before anything I publish or put out there gets caught on to or picked up on. Um, who knows, it's possible that this isn't even a story with a happy ending I mean, in the big picture. I was wondering, people ask where were you when uh, Kennedy was assassinated? Where were you when 9-11 happened? I remember where I went, where I was when I heard about uh, Steve Ray Vaughn dying. I didn't cry about those other people, I cried about Stevie. Um, if you've seen any of the podcast stuff, you've seen that Elvis and I go out to this, uh, I call it the Buffalo Park. Once I teach him how to work or walk a certain place or way. <clears throat> I usually continue in that pattern for his benefit as well as for mine. But one time I was out there and I had this thought, just the idea of a nuclear, like the 1960s version, like the, the flash and you just see the bright flash and then the big hot wave and then all of the debris, then the noise, which means you don't hear it until after it happens and none of those in the urban environments that may experience that <coughs> would experience that but the ones So anyway, the ones that aren't there will remember where they were. And for edgers, um, for the outlanders, they'll all wear something that reminds them of when that happened or something or where they were. There's going to be a something in honor or memory of those people. <coughs> it's my opinion it's probably a shared opinion that if they had a machine worse than the atomic bomb, they wouldn't tell us. And what if they had like an electromagnetic thing that just melted humans? So every person died, but all the structures stayed. Because from my awareness, the only real reason for war is because you want other people to do what you want them to do, not what they want to do. So it's about control, and it definitely started back in the cavemen days when the big and strong and successful could boss around the little and the weak. And they say it was survival of the fitness, but there are a bunch of people like jesters hiding in the shadows, hiding in front of their backs. And uh, with that being said, and I continued 
continued to develop these thoughts that apply both to two different, I mean, I've recorded podcast today that had two different shit almost completely outlined uh, box of rain or residentially challenged yeah I might throw something in there about the Rex Foundation <laughs> <laughs> day's work. See ya. Hey y'all, Clem Hawkins here. Pre-bed podcast. I was trying to get these thoughts out. I think it started with Neil Sagan, Carl Sagan and the Tesseract. And I couldn't figure out which X, Y, Z, or W I was talking about, but one of them is time. It totally makes sense. Can't go faster than the speed of light because we are the speed of light. And the Voyage, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Tyson stuff, the Voyager bubble was that gravitational wave. Um, it's not that it slowed down, but the ability to test it did because there's a ripple in time um makes sense to me and the tesseract and the speed of light and the creation um if everything is the donut and everything that isn't is the space around the donut and if we call that space that isn't the donut god And we can be aware that God is everything we can imagine plus one thing we can't. So it's infinity to the one plus one power. And with that awareness, you become aware that that tesseract, the square square thing should be spiraled. And when that spiral ripple hits the light, it becomes a square square which is why the universe looks flat because the scale in which it's being measured is flat and maybe we're all expanding and contracting at the same time and the fabric of time and space is flat like graph paper in two dimensional world but you make that graph paper infinite and the one thing that I kept thinking or seeing is um Yeah, measure, I don't know. Light's affected by gravity, so gravity is the big thing. Um, oh, the dark matter and the dark force. If we are, okay, now if we're the solid matter, and that's the donut, and God's the donut hole, and the space around the donut, that makes sense why 83% of the stuff we can't see. Then when it comes to that dark matter, dark force thing, um, if you put that donut into tesseract form into a circus clown's balloon animal, uh, possibly different areas of space are bent differently than other areas. And... I think part of the reason is they got out of the solar system and everyone thought they would decelerate a certain amount or whatever. The reason they didn't was because they were too small to be affected by the gravitational field once they were forced through on that second loop. I just loved how the path looked like an eyeball. Anyway, I was going to try to figure out how to tweet something to Neil deGrasse Tyson about the uh, uh, donut, donut hole. Um, and the Tesseract with the 
x y z w being time i don't know if this is true but uh meaning i don't know if w is true but i am aware of that that whole tesseract thing if you look at that at the top part of the cube the, the lines that extend outward is the future the cube is the present divided by the speed of light E equals mc squared is the cube shape then the other side that is open is the past depending on our attention span is how fast that thing cycles thanks i hope that helps or i hope that's interesting helps you get some sleep at night because if we're all that whole nothing something that means that's that eighty percent of everything out there is God. So have a donut hole on me.